Hey, hello again, whiskey friends. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. And if this is your first time here, hey, see if you like the information, check us out. We're doing these reviews all the time. Be sure to come back if you like it. On today's review, I got another really good little bottle here. GTS Brown, bottled in bond. When I recently did the JW Dant, somebody in the comments said, hey, do GTS Brown. And be sure to blind them later. Well, let's start out with the review. The blind will come down the road. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. Let's check out this, uh, gosh, $15 bottle. Woo! All right. So as mentioned off the top, we got the JTS Brown bottled in bond, 100 proof. This cost me 15, maybe $16. And this is a Heaven Hill product. You know, this sits uh, on the bottom shelf, you know, bottled in bond. We talked about four years here. Uh, it's pretty darn good. We're going to go through it in detail. But ultimately, this one and the JW Dant, they're very similar. Very different as well. I was actually surprised on how different they were as I went through them. I'll get into that as we get into the tasting notes. But ultimately, I am going to do some type of blind flight using these down the line. But as you can see, I was pretty impressed by this one already. I'm excited to jump in with you. So for today's review, I got it on a Mash and Journey Glen here. You know, Jason, Scott, maybe we need a JTS Brown single barrel pick. Just going to will that thing into existence. So let's break down the nose palette, and then we'll go into the official scores. Thanks for joining, everybody. You know, trying to give this nose a fair shot, this is something that holds this one back when you do see the final scores. But ultimately, you're not paying $15, $16 to nose a whiskey. So just keep in mind, I do realize that I'm overanalyzing this, but I'm doing it consistently across every whiskey so that the scores essentially make sense. So yes, you're not going to really want to nose this whiskey. So when I say it doesn't have too much of a nose to it, yeah, I know. That's not the point. Ultimately, though, the nose is just mostly flat. Um you know, kind of has a peanut shell, maybe even a sunflower seeds, kind of a smell to it. Little vanilla, little sawdust coming from the wood, and that's it. And it's all kind of muted for the most part as well. So there's just really nothing off-putting or good about the nose. It's just neutral. So let's go in for the taste. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for joining me this far. We're going to go front of the palate, mid palate, then the finish here. Let's start at the front. We'll talk about the mouthfeel, too. I want to run this thing off the glass here. You know, the, the camera doesn't show it too well. This thing is pretty oily for what it is. Yeah, you can start seeing how viscous it is as I'm running it down the glass. But ultimately, at 100 proof, this brings a really good mouthfeel to it. I think it was probably the first characteristic of it that really caught my attention during the review. Uh, it's not giving a whole lot of flavor up front, though. Similar to the nose, very muted up front. Uh, ultimately, what you get is going to kind of mirror the rest of the experience. A creamy peanut butter and a vanilla, but it is quite muted up front. Let's go into mid-palate. In mid palate, things pick up. And this is where it starts to shine. So once again, going with that creamy peanut butter, also got that vanilla note. The thing that was surprising to me, I didn't find on the GTS Brown or the JW Dant, was the spiciness to it. It's almost got a hot cinnamon note mixed in with that vanilla and that peanut butter, and it actually has a pretty good combination.
And then on the finish, it's mostly the same thing again. You're going to talk about the creamy peanut butter, the vanilla, a little bit of that hot cinnamon, uh, and just a little tiny bit of barrel influence there at the end as well. You can kind of feel it. Honestly, I'm getting a little bit of chocolate too. I don't think I was getting chocolate in my notes before, but I'm feeling it this time. So kind of breaking down what I'm talking about. Yeah, the nose muted. Not complex. There's not a whole lot to pull from that. The front of the palate doesn't give you a whole lot of flavor, but the mouth feels pretty darn good. You notice that right away. And then come mid palate. Hey, man, we're just talking about drinking some creamy peanut butter with some vanilla, with some hot cinnamon, a little bit of barrel influence. What's not to like about those tasting notes, you know? Uh, also, for 15, 16 bucks, I mean, I can just keep sipping on this thing. So while not intended to be sipping neat on a whiskey that's 15, 16 bucks, this thing holds its weight, man. I'm telling you. This is going to be like a good summer whiskey. I'm glad I jumped into this one. I can see sitting by a pool, having this on some rocks even, not even feeling, you know, just relaxing with it, not caring, not trying to comp complex tasting notes or anything like that. I do not do that all the time in every single context. Sometimes I need some things to just sit in the background and sip to. And if I'm in that mood, why not do it for 15, 16 bucks? You kidding me? Especially when it's this good. There is nothing off-putting about this pour. It is just good. Good or neutral, right? Like it's either just not giving you anything or all of a sudden it's giving you the flavor. Hmm. So ultimately that sums up my tasting experience on that. Let's get into the scores. So here at the channel, we do have a scoring system with a whole bunch of metrics behind the scenes, breaking it down into three overall categories, flavor, experience, and value. Flavor is just how much you enjoyed the taste of it at each step of the process. Experience is more of that technical score. That's when we get into complexity, the mouthfeel, the balance, the length of the finish. And then value, man, the experience for the money. So, yeah, value, easy 100, by the way. Let's just, I, you know, it's almost like a part in time that like breaks my scoring system. Because I'm like, how do you even, can I give it 20 points? I don't think I can. I only go up to 10 points there, so it got 10 out of 10. The flavor, you know, once again, nothing offensive, but it does begin to bring flavor on the back end. So it ends up right at that 65 there. And then experience, you know, just a lack of complexity is what holds this score back. Got good scores on the mouthfeel, but just doesn't have any complexity to it. It just is what it is, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm fine with it being unapologetic like that, too. They're only charging 15 to $16. So ultimately, you get that final score of a 67, which makes it a good pour in the scoring system. For the recommend, man, I give this a 10 out of 10 on that one. Everyone should try this. You should understand all parts of the shelf as you get into a store. And you need to have this context, you know. If you're coming in on into Kentucky on some vacation and you're looking at the shelf and nothing's impressing you, grab this. This is going to hold you tight for the week. Kidding me? So do I plan to buy another? Yeah, I think I am going to buy another one of these. I can just keep serving this. I'm going to put this in blinds all the time, throw people off. Hmm. Of course, I always tell people I'm going to be throwing it in blinds and throwing people off. So now I got to wait six months to actually put it in a blind. Or I'm just saying I'm going to be waiting six months because I'm putting it in a blind next week. You just never know. But man, what a really good pour. So as I was saying on the top of the video here, man, I got to do this blind with the JW Dant. Now, off memory, we'll see if I feel the same when I'm doing it side by side. The JTS Brown is sweet and light, so it's a creamy peanut butter. It's a vanilla. Um, that, that cinnamon, I guess, is a little bit of a dark note, but it's mostly brighter notes compared to the JW Dant, where I was really talking more about a darker peanut and the shells and just the nuttiness came off as a darker profile. I don't remember if I went into chocolates with that one or not, but it just is a deeper pour versus the brighter pour of the JTS Brown. Hey, when I put them side by side, we'll see if that uh, continues on. But ultimately, man, two really good products here from Heaven Hill. Try them if you haven't. And for this for this one too, the JTS Brown, I may be mistaken on this. Let me know in the comments. 
I do believe the distribution of this one might be limited. It might even be limited to only Kentucky. For some reason, I feel like I did hear that people, when they come to Kentucky, purposefully buy this one because of it being a good value for what it is. But I only hear people say that when they're in Kentucky, which does make me wonder if I'm just spoiled by my proximity here. So let me know in the comments if you see this in your state and where you're seeing it. But otherwise, if you can't get your hands on it, you know how I feel about it now. Well, thank you for joining me today, whiskey friends. I'll catch you for the next whiskey review. Bye, everybody. Jeff, just be friends with me. But you have these whiskey friends, and you say hello again. Oh, Jeffrey, you should just be friends with me. But you have these whiskey friends, and you say hello again. Oh, Jeffrey, you. To just be friends with me But you have these whiskey friends And you say